to First Chapter Friday, where every Friday I read the first chapter or so of a book I think you might just want to finish on your own. Today's book is called The Tornado. It's fairly new. It came out in 2019, um, but not brand new. Really, really good. Kind of a little bit of bullying, a little bit of standby stuff, and just really some complicated things going on. So let me read from the inside cover. Bell Kirby is an expert at systems, whether he's designing the world's most elaborate habitat for his pet chinchilla, recreating Leonardo da Vinci's greatest inventions in his garage, winning his school's creator contest, or avoiding Parker Hellickson, the most diabolical bully that Village Green Elementary has ever seen. Since third grade, Parker has tormented him, and it's taken Bell two years to devise just the right system of avoidance. He has it down to a science, fine-tuned to keep out of Parker's every out of Parker's way every moment of the day. Sure, it means that Bell can't go to the water fountain when he wants to, can't play with his best friend on the playground, and can't tell his parents about his day. But at least he's safe. Until Dalen Gower touches down like a tornado in his classroom. Belle's not sure why the new girl, with her rainbow hair, wild clothes, and strange habits, is drawn to him, but he's sure of one thing. She means trouble. It's bad enough when she disrupts Belle's secret system, but when she becomes the bully's new target, Belle is forced to make an impossible decision. Finally stand up to Parker, or join him. Ooh. Now, there's a prologue before chapter one, and it's done as a set of texts back and forth between um, his dad, who's away from home right now, and, and the boy. Prologue. Servicechat.army.gov. Connected. So this is the dad. All right, genius, you ready for the hardest father-son puzzle you've ever faced? Yeah. Took me all week to think this up. So far, it stumped half of Wiesbaden. Bring it. Here goes, uploading the image now. So there's the image, so you get an idea. You'd want to read the book to see more, but this puzzle stays throughout. A shepherd, weary from protecting her flock from mountain lions, vicious tigers, and grizzly bears, dreams of finding a new home, one where her flock can graze safely. It's not a place she can reach by boat or by train. She has to make the journey on foot, and she's nearly there. Trouble is, she's reached a river, wide and deep and rushing. Fortunately, she's collected some objects on her journey, ones that might prove useful here. Can you use the objects to build a bridge for her and her sheep? And there you have it, Master Engineer. Good luck. You're going to need it. I like the sheep. Those are killer lemmings chasing her. You're weird. I know, right? I get it from my kid. That's not how genetics work. That's what makes it so weird. I love you, Dad. Thanks for the puzzle. I'll look at it tomorrow. Love you, too. Chapter 1. Belle Kirby was supposed to be drawing a map of Central America. If any of his classmates had bothered to look, they'd have seen him hunched over his desk, scribbling furiously with a black pen. They never guessed the curves weren't the borders of Honduras or Guatemala, or the straight lines weren't longitude, or that it wasn't even his social studies notebook hidden in the halo of his arms. And that was just fine with Belle. He needed all of silent work time to sketch and resketch those strange puzzle pieces his dad had sent. Was one of them a crown, a spinning top, a faucet? He paused, cracking his knuckles and rubbing his ink-stained palms together. All he had to do was concentrate a bit longer, and he was sure he'd have it. Not even Parker Hellickson could distract him. Bell was that zeroed in. But then, Dale and Gower touched down in his classroom like a tornado. The door burst open, and a backpack slid across the floor, spewing its contents everywhere. Colored pencils, pink erasers, unicorn folders, a purple glasses case, and three mandarin oranges. A pair of green-handled lefty scissors spun dangerously close to Belle's foot, forcing him to lift his legs before his sneaker got skewered. Just behind the backpack rushed a girl. 
I am so sorry. I forgot to re-zip after I got my glasses out, and I didn't know the door was going to open like that. I'll clean it up here, the girl said as she scampered around. She chased an orange all the way up to Mrs. Vicker's desk, then veered toward Belle, leaning down to pick up her scissors. Blushing, he lunged over his notebook to hide what he had drawn and found himself staring into a rainbow. The girl's hair was cut short, like a candy-coated cap, and it was dyed turquoise and yellow and magenta. Her glasses, as thick as the ones Belle used to wear before he got contacts, had blocky red rims. When she looked up at Belle, he stifled a gasp. Her eyes were two different colors, too. The left was a regular shade of eyeball blue. The right was startlingly green. She smiled sheepishly at him, revealing two lines of braces, each one featuring a multicolored rubber band. Belle shifted silently in his seat. Inside, he was screaming at the girl to go away. Every second she was near him was a moment that Parker Hellickson was watching, too. Clenching his teeth. Belle scooted her scissors forward with his toe until she found them and hurried back to the front of the classroom. He only exhaled once he saw that Parker's eyes were narrowed at the new arrival. Still, Belle curled up as small as he could out of his desk, just in case, and he pulled a few locks of his shaggy blonde hair down like a curtain for good measure. Class, Mrs. Vicker muttered after looking skyward and shaking her head. This is the new student I was telling you about. She'll introduce herself in a moment. Can we remember who we are by helping her pick up the things she's dropped? A few kids closest to the front slid from their desks, scrounging on the floor for erasers and colored pencils. The girl opened her hands, but she couldn't hold everything, and a couple of erasers escaped to bounce underneath the nearby bookshelf. Thank you, Adrian, Chris, and Zane, and welcome, Mrs. Vicker paused, checking a piece of paper on her desk. Dylan? It's day, the girl replied, pushing up her glasses. But that's okay. I get all kinds of different things. You can call me Di if you want. I guess I've got the hair for it. Belle chuckled briefly, though he bit his lower lip and looked down at the floor when he saw that nobody else was laughing. When, where was your old school, David? Mrs. Vickers asked, hitting the day particularly hard. There wasn't one, Daylin said. I did homeschooling. Belle felt every muscle in his neck and back tense at once. He had to force himself to keep breathing. Daylin rubbed nervously at the logo on the sleeve of her jacket. It looked to Belle like a deer, or maybe a moose. Underneath the jacket, she wore a t-shirt with several anime characters drawn across the front. Her pants were covered in patches, and the one on her left knee seemed to be a flower of some sort. The right knee patch was another of the moose things, just as colorful and shocking as her eyes. Is this how homeschooled kids dress, he thought? At least her bright red sneakers look kind of normal. Mrs. Vickers cleared her throat. <clears throat> and where was home? Portland, Oregon. Val's teacher nodded appreciatively. Portland? That's a long way from Cincinnati. Yes, ma'am, Daylin replied. And we drove. Well, welcome to Village Greed Elementary, home of the pioneers. Daylin smiled and Mrs. Vicker led her through a few more questions. Bell contemplated opening his notebook again. Normally, he'd have spent the entire class with his head hovering a few inches from its pages, pretending to take notes while he drew. This day, Lynn, though, was hard to ignore. And it wasn't just the colors, or her breathless entrance, or the homeschooling, or her laugh, which ended just like the last flutters of air squeaking out of a balloon. She was a new variable in his system, kind of like when they moved the snack table inside for morning recess. It jammed everyone up at the same double doors, especially on chocolate chip granola bar days. It took Belle three weeks to redesign his route outside, and he'd been tripped and teased and had his granola bar stolen a half dozen times as he tried to figure it out. That had been a bad time. And based on the scene Jaylen had made when she came in, this had the potential to be much, much worse. And that's the end of chapter one of The Tornado. You gotta be wondering, what is this system? Well, it's complicated, but it has kept Belle safe from the bully. But like he said, Daylin has added a whole new factor to this. 
I hope you give it a try. I, I couldn't put it down. It was really, really good, and I really wanted to know what would happen at the end. So thank you for joining me for our first chapter, and I hope you do so again. Goodbye.